we can take our seats. <laughs> General business, questions to the president, understanding order 70B. Honorable members, before I ask the president uh, to respond to questions, I am just going to make a procedural statement. Good afternoon, honorable members. I wish to welcome His Excellency the President, Dr. Lazarus Makathe Chakwira, into the parliament chamber. You are welcome, Your Excellency. Honorable members, I wish to remind you that His Excellency the President is appearing before the House to answer questions based on Standing Order 70B as read with Section 89.3, Part C of the Constitution of the Republic of Malawi. Firstly, the President will respond to the general issues that were raised by members during general debate on the State of the Nation Address. Thereafter, the President will provide responses to specific questions that have been put forward by five members as they appear on today's order paper. Honorable members, as you are aware, according to our own rules, particularly standing order 70A8, the President will answer maximum of five questions for the period not exceeding one hour, 30 minutes. In each of these five questions, members will be allowed a maximum of three supplementary questions which are guided by Standing Order 70A, Part 10. Let me therefore remind honorable members to strictly abide by these rules. Once again, let me welcome you, Your Excellency, into the chamber. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President, you can. <laughs> Madam Speaker, as required by the Constitution of the Republic of Malawi, which I took an oath to uphold and defend, I once again have the distinguished honor of appearing before you to answer questions from the people of Malawi through those they elected to represent them in this August House. Accordingly, Madam Speaker, your good office has informed me that following my presentation of the State of the Nation Address here 11 days ago, the people have submitted five questions for my response, and so it is only right and proper that I attend to them as a matter of first importance. I say this not only because my presidency is one of the people for the people, but also because this practice of being accountable to the people is commensurate with the principles of good governance. However, Madam Speaker, I'm aware that the voice of the people of Malawi is not confined to the five representatives who have come with questions today. The voice of the people can also be heard through those representatives who have spoken here throughout this past week in which the general debate on my State of the Nation address has been taking place. As such, Madam Speaker, I wish to start by giving a few responses to what some representatives have said during the course of the debate in this House before I yield the floor to the five who have come with specific questions. Out of respect for protocol, Madam Speaker, the first contribution I want to comment on is that from the Honorable Member for Mulanja Central, 
who is also the leader of opposition. First, I wish to express my vote of thanks to him for the following suggestions that I consider to be the most constructive parts of his submission. One, on fixing broken systems, he suggested that following last year's SONA about my administration's quest to fix broken systems, there should be an update on the broken systems we have fixed and which ones remain. My office will thus make this information available. Two, on strengthening the judiciary, he suggested that following my administration's creation of the Financial Economic Crimes Court, there should be an indication of how much funding the court is allocated. And I have directed the Minister of Finance to do so when he presents the budget in a few days. <clears throat> Three, on the fight against corruption, he demanded that the Attorney General should re request the British government to have the National Crimes Agency, NCA, provide the Malay government with evidence in the ongoing investigations into the dealings of Mr. Zunet Sattar. What the Attorney General has said is that he is working on it, and it is not a matter of satisfying political demands as the leader of opposition imagines, but a matter of satisfying the requirements of the law. <laughs> Additionally, the leader of opposition would do well to remember that the dealings of Mr. Sattar are under investigation by both the Malawian authorities and the British authorities in their respective jurisdictions. And so far, it is only the Malay authorities that have charged anyone with any crimes or fired and suspended any public officials implicated in those crimes and initiated prosecutions. As such, it cannot be reasonably claimed that the Malawi government lacks political will to see these cases move towards a just conclusion. What can be said is that the Attorney General has a duty under the law to determine the kind of evidence he should request from the British government based on unique cases under investigations in Malawi, but also based on the kind of progress the unique case in Britain is making in their own jurisdiction. As such, my administration fully supports the Attorney General's constitutional mandate to independently determine these things according to law and not be made to cut corners that can compromise the rule of law on the basis of political pressure from people who have no understanding of the legal instruments involved or the constitutional implications of using those instruments before all due diligence is done to the Attorney General's satisfaction. Number four, <clears throat> on the fight against the Korea outbreak, he has suggested that my administration gives a report on what is being done to give Malawians access to clean water. Well, this is a good idea. I'm amazed that the leader of opposition is not aware of these things which have been outlined across the media for weeks and were even reiterated on the day I launched the Titetse Corrida campaign. So I suppose my request to him on this particular matter is that he should simply pay more attention. <laughs> Beyond these suggestions, Madam Speaker, I must refrain from commenting on whatever else the leader of opposition had to say, 
for instead of responding to the substance in this year's sona, he spent so much time responding to my sona from last year, <laughs> rewriting the history of recent political events, rehashing administrative problems I have already solved, and making unsubstantiated allegations against me based on allegations against persons he wrongly thinks are related to me, which the honorable member for Lilongwe South did well to correct him on. So based on his decision to not touch on the substance of this year's sona, I must conclude that he found my report unassailable, and so in the interest of progress, I'll move on to comment on the contributions of those who actually responded to the sauna. <clears throat> As a case in point, Madam Speaker, the first to do so with great ability was the Honorable Member for Kasungu North, who not only moved the House to adopt and support the policies I presented, but also gave an impassioned and intelligent assessment of the same. As a country, we owe him our thanks for this, for unlike the honorable member for Mulanje Central, he touched on the economic restructuring we must pursue in order to achieve sustainable development goals in the context of Malawi 2063 first 10 year implementation plan. He touched on the expansion of the tax, tax base we must pursue in line with the domestic revenue mobilization strategy. He touched on the successful construction of teacher training colleges in all three regions of the country. He touched on the need to continue our uncompromising policy of supporting local industry. He touched on the food distribution efforts currently going on nationwide under the guide of the Department of Disaster Management Affairs, Dodima in my office. He touched on the great prospects of our aggressive pursuit of agricultural commercialization through the establishment of mega farms. He touched on the seven billion kwacha in social protection funds we have contributed or distributed to vulnerable Malawians. He touched on the investments we are making in sports facilities for the youth. He touched on the need for us to work together to address the challenges that still remain in our midst. And similarly, Madam Speaker, we owe our thanks to the honorable member for Lilongwe East, who not only seconded the motion, but also made a timely appeal for members of the House <clears throat> of the House to debate the sauna soberly, as he himself has done on the reports I had given on what we are doing to redesign the Affordable Inputs Program to leverage our mineral riches for development, to finish the projects the past administration left undone, to construct housing for the country security agencies, to improve public service delivery in health and education, all of which I found most insightful and constructive. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, I must also express my gratitude to the Honorable Member for Zomba Antonia, who delivered a useful response on behalf of the United Democratic Front. <clears throat> It is not common to hear a party that is not in government say that the programs that government is implementing or has in the pipeline resonate well with his, its own aspirations for the country and its citizens. As for the honorable member's sentiment that my son I presented statistics that do not reflect the realities on the ground, there is a simple explanation for that. It is because while the statistics I relayed have to do with what my administration has done on the ground, 
<clears throat> there is still much ground left to cover. Still much work to do to reverse what remains of the problems that Malawians face. And delivering on those remaining areas is precisely why my administration is focusing on this coming fiscal year and beyond. Thirdly, I would also like to express my agreement with him <clears throat> on the fact that one of the things undermining professionalism in the delivery of public services is the politicization of the public sector. But I would hasten to add that members of this House can help correct this anomaly by resisting the temptation to turn every appointment in the public sector into an occasion for political mudslinging and paronia or paronia. It is better to hold those of us making public appointments accountable for our decisions by seeking clarifications and explanations than to politicize those appointments by jumping to conclusions and making allegations. Lastly, I wish to assure the honorable member that I have taken to heart the alarm he has rung about growing rate of psychosocial and mental health problems in the country as reflected in the growing rate of suicides in the past 12 years. I have put the relevant ministries on alert to incorporate this matter in our strategies for improving the welfare of Malawians. Madam Speaker, I would have loved to address all the concerns that were raised by members of this House during the debate, but in the interest of time, Allow me to stop here and yield the floor so that the business of attending to the five questions that were uh, your office, um, your good office was requested to forward to me to come and answer may be done. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Honourable members, I will now call upon Honourable Member for Zomba Lisanjara. Remember, you're only rising to confirm that the question is indeed from Zomba Lisanjara. Zomba Lisanjara, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Indeed, I rise to confirm that question number one, arising from the sauna, is from the people of Zomba Lisanjara. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Zomba Lisanjara. Your Excellency the President. Madam Speaker, the Honorable Member of Parliament for Zomba Lisanjara is asking the President as to what plans the government has to ensure that the fight against corruption in Malawi is not lost. Currently, Malawi has performed badly in the fight against corruption. The Director General of the Anti-Corruption Bureau spent most of her time fighting internal battles than doing what she was employed for. Madam Speaker, <clears throat> my government remains firmly committed to the fight against corruption in Malawi based on actions we have taken and actions we will continue to take in this long war against corruption. One, we are strengthening prevention of corruption. This is being done by strengthening the capacity of institutions in the chain of prevention of corruption. The Anti-Corruption Bureau is only but one institution in that chain. But our approach is to strengthen all the institutions in that chain because a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. 
and this includes PPDA, Government Contracting Unit, Auditor General's Office, Accountant General's Office, Financial Intelligence Authority, Malawi Police Service, Financial Crimes Court. As for the prevention strategies, our actions include instituting integrity committees, conducting lifestyle audits, for which the ACB has already developed a manual guide. Whistleblower Protection Act. Consultations with stakeholders have already taken place with support from our cooperating partners, and particularly the European Union and the United Nations. And now the process is with the Law Commission. And finally, review of primary school curriculum to include ethics and corruption subjects in the curriculum. Number two, we are strengthening prosecution capacity. Recently, the Anti-Corruption Bureau advertised to recruit lawyers from private practice to boost the capacity of the ACB in prosecution of cases. The ACB itself right now has 16 lawyers of its own who can prosecute cases and after duly conducting the procurement process recently, the ACB identified three more lawyers from private practice to help with the prosecution and is now in the process of drawing up contracts for them which will be performance based. Also at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, we are in the process of strengthening capacity by bringing in one or two very experienced prosecutors to not only prosecute specific cases of corruption and fraud, but also to transfer skills to the younger lawyers. Thirdly, the Financial Crimes Court. This court is now established, and it was an initiative of this government to improve the fight against corruption. Three judges have initially been appointed the court is currently operational. I would therefore say that in view of these measures, we must avoid the sensationalist ad idea that Malawi is doing nothing to curb corruption or that we are losing that fight. You cannot measure the progress of the fight against corruption by headlines and social media allegations. The measure of the fight against corruption is whether institutions are being given what they need to win that fight and whether they are producing results in the form of stopping fraud from happening, recovering what was stolen in the past, and prosecuting those responsible until they are convicted. And in these critical areas, we are making much progress. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, Honorable Member for Machinga East. Oh, sorry, the owner of the question, you're rising. Yes, the owner of the question. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Mr. President, is it true that you were not aware that the Director General of SCB was arrested up until everybody else in Malawi knew about it. Thank you. Machinga East and then uh, Ziti Deza, Deza North, yes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for recognizing the people of Machinga East constituency to ask the, a supplementary question to the President. My question is, Mr. President, sir, the country has learned a lot on what has happened to the Director of Anti-Corruption Bureau. My question to you, are you ready to reduce your powers in as far as uh, some appointments in government is concerned? <laughs> Mr. President, you promised the Malawians that when you become a president, you make sure that the appointment of the director 
of uh, Director General of SCB will, be, will, not be, will not be done by the office of the President. And are you ready to collect the anomaly of poor governance systems in Malawi, where the Secretary to the President is being the cha body chair of NOKMA, Ijenko, as well as Green Belt Initiative? I submit my Honorable member for... Honorable member for Machinga East, uh, 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 Honorable member for Machinga East, your first part I think is related, but your second part, remember the questions that we're asking, the supplementaries, are supposed to be related to the question and the response that was given by the President. Thank you. The North? Is, Madam, the, the, the North. Madam Speaker, it's a, uh, a governance issue, a, a question. It's to do with governance. On, on, on a, on a member, I've, I've not given you the floor to respond. I've not given you the floor to respond. Let the North, please. Um, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for allowing the people of the Zanoff to ask a supplementary question to His Excellency, uh, the President. Um, Madam Speaker, I would like to learn from uh, His Excellency about what his government is doing uh, when it comes to handling of uh, corruption cases. Uh, because in Malawi, as you can still remember, there was cash get. Some of those cases are still on the table. And, um, and there were other cases in the past five or six years which are still in the courts. And um, it has been realized that, Madam Speaker, the perception out there, it's like in Malawi, corruption cases actually never end. So my question is, there is a principle which is used in other fields, which is called first come, first save. I just wanted to know if these governance institutions in Malawi are able to follow that principle of first come, first save when it comes to prosecution of uh, corruption cases. And, and, uh, and supporting that idea, Madam Speaker, it is a worry that we have because it looks like there are already over 2,000 cases of corruption. And uh, what we are looking at is to say at the pace that we are moving as a country, it looks like uh, it might take us over 10 years to finish all the cases. So I just wanted to know what is uh, the government doing to make sure that the first come, first save principle applies and then again a speedy way of uh, handling the corruption cases. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Honorable member for the North, Your Excellency the President. Madam Speaker, let me respond to the follow-up question that was seeking to know if the President was truly unaware that the ACB Director General had been arrested. The reason that I went to the length of establishing a commission was to establish that fact. And that fact was stated by men and women of impeccable character in this country who stated in no uncertain terms that what I was claiming was nothing but the truth. In this country, we have institutions that have mandates to operate as per law. In other countries, they also have their own jurisdiction. And it is not necessarily a president that would order police officers on the street of so-and-so to arrest such-and-such. Such. Even in their democracies, they know that. That's what we follow per the law. Madam Speaker, 
There was a question from Machinga East to the end that, are you ready to reduce your powers in the appointment of ACB Director General? Madam Speaker, I want you to understand that these are matters not of a presidential decree, but of changing the law. And these laws need to be looked at in view of so many other challenges that number one, the Law Commission, number two, uh, Minister of Justice are facing with in order for us to respond as soon as is practicable to the many challenges this country is facing. But you must remember that there are still checks and balances built into our system. Parliament is the one that confirms an appointment made by president. And if parliament is unhappy, parliament can inform the president of the same. Dead the North says, uh, what are you doing about the handling corruption cases? Because the perception is like order, honorable members, order, please. Only those cases being considered are not in totality the whole that should be. And he used what he called uh, a first come, first served principle. Madam Speaker, I want you to understand the courts and the judiciary have constitutional independence under our Constitution. So the management and speed of cases is entirely in the hands of the court as they hear the case. Executive does not interfere with the judiciary in any way. And we do have, in this country, ways and means of making sure that we all have checks and balances in how these institutions operate. But it would not be correct to ask the executive, as president of the country, to begin ordering courts what they need to do or what they need not do. That is how our Constitution was so designed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Your Excellency. We now go to SONA question two from Chisi South. Chisi South, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And indeed, let me confirm that question number two on the SONA questions to the President is coming from the people of Senior Chief Kalumo, Senior Chief Malenga, Chisi South, and indeed on behalf of the whole nation. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member for Chisi South. Your Excellency the President. Madam Speaker, the second question is from Chisi South and is to ask the President as to what mechanisms has the government put in place in order to expedite in many areas the program of mega farms. While there are some steps that the government has started doing in some areas, 
I feel there is still more that your government could urgently do in many irrigable and non-irrigable areas so that Malawians should really see that as government you are doing enough on this very good idea of yours. Lastly, I'd like to know if there are any plans to resuscitate activities that used to take place in press agriculture and general farming, big estates, which I feel can easily be made into mega farms. That was a question. Madam Speaker, I want to thank you for this question and thank the Honorable Member Chisi South. Wanting to find out as to what government is doing to expedite the program of mega farms across the country. As you are aware, Madam Speaker, I indeed directed my Minister of Agriculture to guide the establishment of mega farms in pursuance of the Pillar 1 of the Malawi Implementation Plan 1, MIP 1, 2021-2030 of the Malawi 2063 vision, whose goal is to change the country's economic fortunes through improved agricultural produ uh, production and commercialization. In response to this, the ministry developed a concept with guidelines that, among other things, have come up with the categorization of mega farms in accordance to crop or livestock type and sizes. In this regard, Madam Speaker, we have categorized the mega farms as follows. One, crops. A crop mega farm has to be large scale farm with a minimum of 500 hectares, which has to be an anchor farm with irrigation and mechanization and has to be linked to small and medium scale farmers, individual farm sizes of up to 100 hectares, through up cooperatives as well as estate farmers, 100 to 490 hectares. And Madam Speaker, the aim of the linkage is to leverage an increased combined productivity for aggregation, processing and marketing. Two, horticultural high value crops through greenhouses as a mega farm has been categorized to be a minimum of five hectares and where possible, we also be linked to small scale greenhouses within the vicinity of the horticulture mega farm. Three, livestock for beef and dairy farms. The minimum is 200 animals. Whereas for the small ruminants, the minimum is 2,000 goats or sheep. For poultry, the minimum is 10,000 birds. And the minimum for piggery is 1,000. Like the crops, this will also be linked to smallholder cooperatives, medium scale, and estate farmers. Madam Speaker, as regards to the implementation of this program, my government has identified several large-scale farms across the country, both government and private, some with irrigation infrastructure already in place, while others require investments, especially in irrigation infrastructure, before they can be put to use. Now, these farms, Madam Speaker, are highlighted as follows. Tola Ilola, a thousand hectares in Karonga, where the construction of the irrigation systems is currently underway. Luea Irrigation Scheme, 700 hectares in Karabe. Mlambe Kopola Irrigation Scheme, 800 hectares in Mangochi. Linga Irrigation Scheme, a thousand hectares in Karabe. Utale Irrigation Scheme, this is 250 hectares in Balaka. Likubula Irrigation Scheme, 410 hectares in Chikwawa. Mtengula Irrigation Scheme, 500 hectares in Neno. 
Nkawin irrigation scheme, which has 200 hectares in Blantyre. Muona irrigation scheme, 525 hectares in Sanje. Gada MDF farm, which is 1,650 hectares in Mchinji. All these have irrigation systems in place, and my government is making all necessary arrangements to put them into production. Madam Speaker, government has also identified several large-scale farms belonging to government that the Ministry of Agriculture, through support of partners, is working towards installing large-scale irrigation infrastructures. These include Balachanda, that's 24,000 hectares in Mzimba, Bwanje Valley, 11,000 hectares in Dezancheo, and Lifu, 12,000 hectares in Salim. Other government mega farms specifically for livestock production include Wamba's livestock farm, 5,000 hectares in Mzimba and Kurakota. Mikolongwe Livestock Farm, 1,000 hectares in Chirazu. And Likas Livestock Farm, 2,000 hectares in Mchinji. The Dwambazi Livestock Farm is already being developed with the participation of private sector. Furthermore, Madam Speaker, my government has also identified a number of privately owned large-scale farms that have been earmarked for my government's support towards the development of mega farms. And currently, the Ministry of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Ministries of Finance and Trade and Industry, are in the process of compiling special incentives for the private sector mega farms investors in order to support and attract them into mega farms investment. Madam Speaker. Some of the private sector prospective mega farm investors include Kabwafu, 12,800 hectares in Mzimba, Katoto Farms, 1,000 hectares in Mzimba, Kasu Moody Kasunjola Farms, 1,850 hectares in Lilongwe, General Farming Estate Number 25, 550 hectares in Kasungu, General Farming Estate Number 18, 938 hectares in Kasungu, Lichenya, 1,245 hectares in Mulanji, Cape Clear Farm, 1,000 hectares in Mangochi, Kapute Farm, 800 hectares in Korakota, Bazo Farm, 751 hectares in Korakota, and Africa Village Produce Investment Farm, 600 hectares in Chisi. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Your Excellency. The owner of the question, on Chisi's South. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And through you, let me thank the President for a very elaborate and compre comprehensive response to my question. I am very satisfied. But Madam Speaker, in the same vein, uh, we have a population which is composed of many youths that is from the ages of uh, 18 maybe up to 40 I would like to ask the president that with all the vision that he has told this country today through my question uh, where are we placing the youth because uh, for a long time youth in Malawi have been thinking that maybe agriculture issues are for the old people. What are the issues that have been put in all this uh, good arrangement to incentivize the youth so that they should look at agriculture as something very attractive? I submit, Madam Speaker. You Mkata Bay South uh, East and then Mangochi Southwest. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker for giving me Katabe Southeast a chance to ask a supplementary question to the President. But before I do that, uh, Mr. President, an adage from the people of Katabe Southeast is that when a husband, a wife, fights with a husband to sort out issues in the house, 
it does not mean that she wants to end the marriage and marry the bachelor next door. <laughs> now, uh, now coming directly to my submitted question, Mr. President, is that, that since you developed the concept of mega farms, are there any efforts by relevant ministries to, to try to foreign investors in these mega farms? I'm asking that question, Mr. President, because I know when you go to other countries like Mozambique, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Zambia, we've got uh, people who invest at a large scale in these mega farms. Thank you. Mangoji South East. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for giving the people of Mangoji Southwest an opportunity to ask a question to the President of the nation. First of all, let me thank you, Mr. President, for availing yourself to take a question from the people of Mangoji Southwest here at Parliament. The question that I have, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, considering and I must say this, that the concept of mega farms is a beautiful one, and indeed which the people of Mangoi Southwest supports. But the question that I have for you, Mr. President, is as follows. What incentives do you have to spur and grow investments in mega farms? Specifically, Madam Speaker, I'm expecting the President to highlight his taxation policy in so far as to promote uh, invest in mega farms. Elsewhere, income tax is exempt from, uh, from mega farms operations. You also exempt or you also give concessions, particularly in this country where electricity is a, is a problem and therefore we are going to have blackouts. Then you give concessions on the use of fuel like diesel. In the end, you make it simpler and easier for the business people, for the investors, to invest and to produce uh, using mega farms. Specifically also, I'm looking at the financing policy that you have. Currently, what we have right now, the interest rates are hovering around towards 30%. It is very difficult for a farmer, for an investor, to invest in these mega farms, much as it is a best, the best concept. Uh, is your government willing to subsidize the interest rates so that the business investors can access credit, that credit which they can actually invest in these mega farms? I'm also looking at a situation where you need to invest in the mechanization. I think time is gone where we are using a hole. So these mega farms will require a lot of investments and will require a lot of money. Uh, is your government willing to subsidize the interest rates? The third one is about, uh, it's related, Madam Speaker, and yeah, I'm finishing. And it's for the benefit, it is for the benefit of Mangoi Southwest. The third one, Madam Speaker, currently what we have here, we have a situation where prices of produces are controlled and controlled by the state. What happens is that uh, maybe this April, you see the Minister of Agriculture issuing a circular saying, maize, we are going to sell and such, such. Is your government, Mr. President, willing to have a policy where you guarantee that the prices at game price, at gate prices, will not be controlled to the extent that you are willing to enter into forward contracts so that you guarantee these investors a return on their investment? Thank you, Madam Speaker. This is what I had for the people of Magoy Southwest. And thank you, Mr. President, for listening and taking this question. This is Magoy Southwest. Maybe you, you haven't seen him, but this is Magoy Southwest. Thank you very much. This is the Magoy Southwest. Thank, thank you, you Mangochi. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Mangochi Southwest. Your Excellency, he's emphasizing he's from Mangochi Southwest. Your Excellency, the President, please. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. 
There was a follow-up question from Chisa South with regard to what we're doing. But there's so many young people. Where are we placing them in all of this talk vis-a-vis -vis Mega Farms? Madam Speaker, let me just uh, state that many times when we're talking about youth that are able to do these things, 18 through 40, uh, sometimes uh, even when we launch the National Youth Service in uh, uh, NENO, uh, we explain how that, uh, in fact, we took them to some farm uh, as a demonstration uh, right there in NENO when we were launching this program we wanted to make sure they know that they are not being excluded. In fact, they are included. And as we speak, we even have youth already being trained in Israel on how to do agriculture and how to do it with maximum ability to make sure our productivity is enhanced. And so we are certainly including the young people in all of these plans. After all, when we talk about Malawi 2063, talking about an inclusively wealthy, self-reliant nation, these are the main players. We are now way out. And they will make this country what it needs to become. Thank you. Then we have Kara Bay Southeast. In Karabi Southeast is always uh, an intriguing figure. We share a lot from the classics, the literature he's read, the application he makes, but that's for another day. His question is, what efforts are being made by relevant MDAs with regard to all of these, well, great sounding ideas? I can just give you an example. The Ministry of Transport is already making plans of doing roads to make sure that these farms are accessible and they have access to markets. Even development partners have gone into helping with such developmental efforts in making sure that uh, farms are linked to markets through well-developed roads, some which roads have been mentioned uh, here. And so we can even talk about what uh, Minister of Finance uh, is saying, but then I can go on to uh, the incentives because mostly that's where the Minister of Finance was being uh, targeted by uh, Mangochi Southwest. I know Mangochi Southwest wanted me to make sure I know it is Mangochi Southwest. <laughs> My, before I get to uh, that question, which has several parts. My idea is that uh, when we're talking about MDAs, they need to work together pursuing a common vision, not each one thinking they are acting independently of the others. And so it's important for all of us to understand that when we're talking about a common vision, Malawi 2063, everyone in the MDAs 
need to be aligned to that vision and we need to be going in the same direction and we need to be cooperating talking to each other to avoid duplication and unnecessary wastage and so Mangoji Southwest says what incentives do you have um, and he went on to even cite examples uh, with regard to taxation concessions financing uh, and uh, even prices of produce uh, which he felt uh, government uh, has too much control over. What government actually uh, does, to start from the last one, is to help ordinary farmers, uh, smallholder farmers, get a little something. If even in producing what they have, you want to buy that which they have produced at less than the cost they incurred in producing that. That is criminal injustice to farmers. And so what government tries to do, even though we know that this is a free market economy, is to set minimum prices. To say at least give the farmer this much. Don't rob him of or her of everything just because they are poor Malawians who have no say with regard to what prices they demand for their produce. That is to make sure we feel and stand and sit with the smallholder farmer who is struggling and yet works hard to produce the little they have. So that is the reason for setting a minimum price. Not that you can't buy uh, uh, you know, that produce for more than that. In fact, others have gone ahead to uh, buy or pay more money than the minimum price. That is just a minimum, not something to settle for. But what has happened, even with that uh, government policy, what has happened is because people are known to be too poor, everyone who goes there with a little bit of money says, well, you need this money, though. And then they just say, well, give it to me. And um, it's daylight robbery. That is not good for Malawians. We will remain poor if that is the uh, 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 price we want to pay for just making sure someone who buys is the only one who makes profit. It has to be a win-win situation for Malawians. But in terms of um, other incentives, uh, there are tax holidays. Um, there are duty and VAT-free uh, equipment uh, waivers uh, that um, particularly when you, it comes to irrigation equipment. And so we want everyone to make sure that uh, they are able to bring these things um, uh, concessionally. But again, while you do have uh, policies which they want to make sure uh, these become standardized so nobody can come up with a policy today, another one comes up with another one tomorrow. Uh, while we're working to standardize all of this, people need to know that already there are these concessionary rates uh, that are applied in order for uh, us to have the kind of investment or uh, to spar the kind of investment we need. So the tax issue is, you know, uh, is something that we need to uh, look at. Uh, and I say it even <laughs> just as, uh, uh, you know, was it yesterday, to the Minister of Finance. I says you must work on the modalities of how to uh, uh, spur investment uh, for mega farms and uh, include all of that. And so some of the things that I am uh, blubbing about right now, the Minister of Finance will have more to say uh, with regard to how these things can work. However, I need to make mention of this thing. Even when all the ducks are not in a row, it does not mean we should stop and not move forward. We can drive a vehicle better once it started moving. And so we must move with what is already in place 
which already encourages others to invest while we uh, plead for more investors to come. And so we will be listening and we will be making adjustment with regard to what needs to happen for this country to really embark on a trajectory of productivity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We now go to SONA question three, and it's coming from Mangochi Central. Mangochi Central, you have the floor. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I rise to confirm that question number three comes from the people of Mangochi Central. Thank you. Thank you, Mangochi Central. Your Excellency, the President. Madam Speaker, I want to thank the Honorable Member for Mangochi Central, whose question is to ask the President on the status of Mangochi International Airport. Land was already earmarked, and people of Mangochi are still in dilemma, waiting as this would have changed the face of Mangochi which is a tourism district or hub. Madam Speaker, through you allow me to thank the Honorable Member of Mangochi Central for her question. The Honorable Member is requesting for an update on the status of development Mangochi International Airport, where land was indeed already allocated at Namiasi in the area of Tiem Ponda. Madam Speaker, my government acknowledges the importance of having a modern airport in Mangochi to facilitate the development of tourism in that district and the nation in general. The development of tourism is central to attaining the goals of Malawi Agenda 2063, and such my government is actively engaged in various donors and the private sector for possible financing of the airport. Madam Speaker, I'm informed that the Honorable Member previously asked the question to the Honorable Minister of Transport and Public Works. I therefore wish to reaffirm what was said then, that Mangochi International Airport will commence as soon as possible after the development of Chileka and Mzuzu airports is completed. However, should financing be identified, because we are still looking, this can be developed in parallel with the other airports. And I want to thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, a supplementary question, uh, um, Honorable Member for, oh, the owner of the question, the Nichitipa South, and then the Lilongwe, Lilongwe City West. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Speaker, once again. Madam Speaker, I wanted to ask the President or to remind him if I can retreat in uh, day times, 31st May 2020, when he was promising the people of Mango Centro about the airport, he also mentioned about tourism city and a factory, fishing factory. So, perhaps this serves him as a reminder that the people of Mungo Centre are still waiting for the tourism city and the fishing factory. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mungo Centro, Chitipa South. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for recognizing the people of Chitipa South to ask a supplementary question. Oh, the honorable uh, members, order, please. Let's hear the honorable member for Chitipa South in silence, please. Uh, through you, Madam Speaker. I would like to find out from, from the state president on, a, on two issues concerning airports. The first one is that uh, as a country we have seen our aerodromes being turned into ruins. Some have been turned into housing estates. Yes. I have a good example of Nkota Kota. The Sudan it is a housing estate. Mangochi, housing estate. Yes. Mzimba, housing estate. Now, we still have others which are still there, but they are turning into ruins. So I want to find out from His Excellency what is the government doing about uh, 
making sure that these aerodromes are saved. A good example is Chitipa, Karonga, Chirumba, we have Manke Bay, we have Nsanje, we have Kasungu. Just, just an example. Secondly, uh, as much as I appreciate the, His Excellency's statement that they are going to develop Mzuzu into an international airport, I would like through you, Madam Speaker, to request him to kindly consider rehabilitating the existing Mzuzu airport so that at least we should have commercial flights flying to Mzuzu because we only need the runway to be rehabilitated and to have a fence. It's a request to His Excellency. I submit, Madam Speaker. Member for Chitipa South, Lidongwe City South, is it City South? Yes. City West. Well, City West, yes. Yeah. Th thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my question is about the infrastructure development in the country. Most uh, Malawians, they have been asking when they see the mushrooming of infrastructure development in the country. And they ask what magic does the president possess to make sure that these infrastructure development, they cut across the country without looking at the tennis groups, uh, regional boundaries, or without looking where he got more votes. So my eyes would like to ask you, um, Mr. President, where is your magic to develop the country from Chitipa to Sanje, from Chinji to Mulanje, without looking where you got more votes, ethnic groups and regional groups. So my would like to hear from you. Thank you, Mara. Thank you, President. Thank you, Honorable Member for Lilongo City South West. Your Excellency, the President. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mangochi Central was very kind to remind the President about Tourism City and Fishing Factory in Mangochi. In fact, If you indulge me for a little bit, because former president or late president Binguam Tarika had privileged me to serve in a committee that was established in six universities in the country, we were going to establish another university in Mangochi to look precisely into this. And so, I want you to know that that dream is not dead. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is to try and say, what can be done now, what can be done tomorrow, what can be done the other day? Because we can't do all things at once. If you look at, and the finance minister will be presenting his statement uh, this week, if you look at what the country is able to generate, it is basically just paying workers, paying pensions, and paying debts. Very little left for development. We need to generate more. If we keep spending what we don't generate, we keep getting deeper and deeper into debt. And so we have to choose what is first and second and third and move in that order. This is not good news to many people because a lot of people want their particular developmental uh, item done now, 
just now, now, now. And it's not possible. I'm just being very blunt and frank. But we will get to these things, the manner in which we move. Chitiba South talked about many aerodromes in the country that have been turned into ruins or housing estates. And while you talk about Nzuzu, New Airport, which by the way, um, we are already advanced in making sure that that happens. Because I could remind you that uh, when a foundation stone was laid and said, that was in 2017, said uh, this thing would be done, uh, there was no agreement whatsoever even with a Frexian Bank that was to fund it. But we are moving in that direction. However, you say, can Nzuzu Airport still be rehabilitated? So they are commercial flights. That airport, and depends what commercial flights you're talking about, because flights already go there, like they go to Karonga. But because of the fact that the strip is too small. It can only accommodate certain kind of commercial flights. What we are thinking about is not just rehabilitating, but build a bigger airport. And so the Minister of Transport and uh, uh, Public Works uh, will consider what you just stated in order for us to make sure that while we do the big thing, we are also taking care of this small thing. Uh, I, I, Madam Speaker, I don't know if um, uh, um, uh, Lilongwe Southwest, uh, City West, um, uh, had um, a question, um, but but he he, he yeah. Uh, the, the magic I have is the fact that Malawi is one country and Malawi should be developed equally and that even developmental product, uh, projects that were started pre by previous administrations need to be completed because they are good for Malawi. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Why are you rising, honorable member from Zimba North? Mm -hmm. uh, Madam. Uh, no, oh, no. Order, order, Madam, honorable members. Madam, Madam Speaker. Order. Madam order, Speaker. honorable members. Order, honorable members. Order, uh -huh. please. Order, please. Madam Speaker, uh, let me appreciate for the eloquent. No, I hope your uh, honorable member from Zimba North. Yes, I. I the, hope it's a point of order, not a supplementary. You all no, know our just, rules. We have done three supplementaries. It's a point so of order. So state what is out of order. It's a, it's a point of order. Yes, so just go straight into stating what has gone out of order, thank please. You. But let me thank the president. I think you have ably uh, responded to several questions. But, Mr. President, is it in order that you have ably answered the Lilongwe Centro, Mangochi, Chitipa no, South, but Please. you cannot pinpoint oh, no, oh, no, a project oh, no, that you have completed in your time oh, no, oh, no, in two years, oh, no, oh, and all oh, Malawi yes, Madam, well, when the voters are no, no, supposed I, to be addressed to you, not to the president. Yes, just a minute. Honorable member from Zimba North. I am really waiting for a place. Zimba North. Honorable member from Zimba North. A point of order is directed at the speaker and not the person responding the question, in this case the president. So just state what has gone out of order. Please. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the president, but Madam, Madam Speaker, is it in order 
that uh, the president has answered all the questions very properly, eloquently, and the whole world has listened to his classic language. I appreciate that. But he has never defined a project that he has finished in two years. At least that you promised that he has member, Thank you, Madam on, Speaker. Honorable member for Mzimba North, that, that, that is not a point of order. That's not a point of order. Honorable members, but can I have order, please, honorable members? Can I have order? Harombe Hospital. Yes. Can I have order, please? Honorable members, let, let us proceed, honorable members. That is definitely out of order, I'm Simba North. Can we now go to question four? And Cheu Banje South. Cheu Banje South. Uh, thank you very much. Madam Speaker, for recognizing the people of Nsheugwanje South, I arise this afternoon to confirm that question number four is indeed from the people of Senior Chief Makwangwara, Tia Ganya, and Sabtien Kutumu. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Member for Gwanje South. Your Excellency the President. Honourable members, order please. Order please. Madam Speaker and Chair of Wanja South. Members, can I have order please? Mangochi South West, let me have order. Mr. Kasungu the, North, let me have order please. Honourable members, order to please. Ask the President what plans the government has put in place to prevent the mess of lead distribution of the farm inputs under the Affordable Inputs Program, AIP, where the beneficiaries are getting the fertilizers too late. Madam Speaker, I would like to thank the honorable member of Chair Banja South constituency asking as to what plans my government has put in place to prevent lead distribution of farm inputs under AIP as it was the case this year. Madam Speaker, the government will undertake the following in order to avert lead distribution of inputs. One, Realign EPAs with constituencies to serve people better. Two, targeting the beneficiaries, government will use farmers clubs established by Minister of Agriculture. And beneficiaries targeted in areas where the maize is the principal food crop grown, as well as target only those that are in maize production, establish categories of beneficiaries, and then those who are elderly and with disabilities to receive social cash transfer. Those who have the ability to work will build public works program. Those with land that is considered protected to be under clubs for AIP. Those with large parcels of land to be under agricultural commercialization, agricom. In terms of procurement of fertilizer, we want to do it on time. We want to procure fertilizers that are manufactured as per order, not buying through vendors. We want to work with the established verification entities, namely PPDA, ACB, GCU, and SFFRFM, to expedite procurement. We want the fertilizers to be in SF. FRM 
by mid-June. We want the procurement logistics to be on time so that transport, warehousing, clerks, digital communication gadgets, and involvement of stakeholders is done properly. These stakeholders would include NIS, ACB, police, and Malawi Human Rights Commission. These are some of the things, even as we speak, that are being looked into. Thank you. Very much, Your Excellency. I now recognize Karunga Nyungwe Mwanza. Sorry, the, the owner of the question is rising. Uh, the, the owner of the question, Karunga Nyungwe and Mwanza West. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for recognizing the people of Nchelba and South to ask Mr. President the supplementary question. Uh, Mr. President, I just want to find out, out from you uh, what measures are put in place uh, that uh, uh, smugglers not smuggle the commodity outside the country. Since uh, you are saying you are going to start uh, distribution, uh, in July or June. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Honorable Member. Sorry, uh, Honorable Member for Ncheu Banje, Karunga Nyungwe, and then Mwanza West. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Is it on a point of order, Tiolo Tava? Uh, right Honorable Speaker, thank you very much for allowing the people of Tiolo Tava to, for a point of order. Madam Speaker, uh, what the President is um, answering is indeed what uh, we agreed in a business committee. But at the same time, we had a similar question to the question that um, uh, on number four on our uh, um, order paper. And uh, the question is coming from Zomba Malosa. And the committee agreed that Zomba Malosa will be considered on a supplementary question. Madam, this is just a reminder, I thank you. Honorable thank member you very for much. Karunga Nyungwe. Th thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, the people of Karunga Nyungwe would like to know uh, uh, if uh, the President would also consider uh, substituting AIP with uh, mega farms uh, if it were implemented and successful. Uh, the people of Karunga Nyungwe feel, feel that mega farms would be uh, if it, uh, would be an, ex an excellent substitution uh, which uh, if it, uh, well uh, implemented and successful uh, people, uh, the people of Malawi oh, oh, down uh, members, would do oh, significantly uh, benefit from uh, these mega farms as uh, they would get uh, equally uh, uh, the bags even more than that uh, maybe the ba more, more, uh, more bags of maize as uh, compared to two bags of uh, fertilizer. I submit, uh, right on a speaker, uh, I humbly submit. Thank you. Mwanza Waste. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for recognizing the people of Mwanza West constituency and for giving us an opportunity to ask uh, His Excellency the State President a supplementary question. Right on speaker, the people of Mwanza West constituency would like uh, to thank uh, the government that despite the forex challenges, the government continues uh, to implement the AIP, which is good. However, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, the people of Mwanza West would like uh, to ask the state president that there were some other farmers that actually had their cards or swiped or paid for the fertilizer, but uh, up to now uh, they haven't uh, received uh, the fertilizer they paid for. Can, they, can His Excellency please assure Malawians that these farmers will definitely uh, get uh, what they paid for? Secondly, your, your Madam Speaker, through you, uh, can Let I have order? We need the president to hear the questions, please. Let me appreciate the fact that the head of state outlined some of the uh, you know, steps he's taking to make sure that AIP is very successful this uh, coming season. However, the people of Mazawes constituency feel that despite the huge investment in AIP, 
the country continues uh, to go through hunger, which shows that uh, the benefits from AIP are not uh, matching uh, with the uh, huge uh, investment. And uh, we would like uh, to, I would like to learn on behalf of the people of Manza West, uh, if whether the state, of, state president feels that AIP is beneficial and also to ask how his government is going to reform uh, the program so that the country uh, reaps benefits uh, from the huge uh, investments uh, in AIP, especially or particularly on the production uh, side of it to improve uh, farmer productivity. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Mwanza West, uh, I just wanted to guide on the issue that was raised by Cholo Tava. Um, I think yes, and the business committee had agreed that probably the questions were looking similar. But I don't think when I was uh, looking for people to ask supplementary questions, I didn't see the Honourable Member rising. Then, then, then she can have the floor and have the fourth question. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for giving uh, the people of uh, Zomba Malosa a uh, chance to ask a fourth supplementary question um, to the President. Madam Speaker, uh, on the AIP uh, question, Zomba Malosa is interested to know what plans are there for the President uh, in terms of transportation. This year's AIP, uh, we members of parliament were using our own resources, uh, money to transport uh, uh, fertilizer. Now, as he was ex uh, answering his uh, answers, the president, I, I have just heard him talking about uh, using clubs and what have, but he didn't uh, work out on the issues of transportation. Because when we started having fertilizer in this country, the other challenge that we had was transportation. So most of the uh, members of parliament, it's not like uh, they failed to uh, give their constituents fertilizer, but it, they had the uh, transportation challenge. So I really wanted to know what plans are there. And again, uh, on his answer, he, used, he says that he's going to work on the farmers' clubs. Uh, Madam Speaker, I would like to maybe uh, uh, remind the president that on this issue of farmers' club, uh, there, the people are made to be in uh, groups of 25, and uh, when the fertilizers are coming, only six names, sometimes seven names, are the ones that are benefiting fertilizer. Now, uh, Zomba Malosa is a bit uh, confused because if you talk about uh, six people out of 25, uh, it Remember, means, supplementary is a minute, please. Okay. I think the president should get me there, please. We, uh, out of 25 people, only six people are the one benefiting fertilizer. So I really want to know what plans are there when he's using again Farmers Club. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, government Chief Whip, you're rising. Yes, Madam Speaker, to ask for your guidance on questions from uh, Manza West. Uh, because our standing order 70A1 actually stipulates that the questions that shall go to the president shall be those ones that cannot be addressed by the minister. And so the minister took time here to explain exactly what she has asked, about one hour. So I want to ask if that is in order for you, for the president to readdress the questions that the minister already asked. Thank you very much. Thank you, honorable members. Um, the guidance from the WIP is indeed uh, uh, true, but of course these issues are related. It's up to the president to decide if he is going to respond or not. Of the House. Madam Speaker, 
I'm, I'm rising to ask that we waive all relevant standing orders in order for us to allow the president to take the, all, the, all the five questions uh, because I can see that time is, is gone. I, be, I, beg, I beg to move. Thank you, uh, Honorable Leader of the House. Honorable members, we have a motion on the floor. Can I have order, please? The motion is that we waive all relevant standing orders in order for us to allow the president to respond to all five questions. Those of that opinion say aye. Those of the contra view say no. The ayes have it and the motion is carried. Your Excellency, the president, please respond to question, uh, supplement the questions to question four. Thank you. Madam Speaker, thank you for the follow-up question from the South. How are we going to prevent smuggling of fertilizer out of the country? We will involve the police and MDF more. We will involve chiefs and community leaders to take the lead, and everyone is called to be on the lookout. We need to love this country more than we personally want personal profits, and those caught smuggling will be dealt with accordance to the law. <laughs> Karonga Nyungwe says, can we not substitute AIP with mega farms? Let me... Honorable members, honorable members, can we let the president respond to the questions, please? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Mulanje Bali wants to help the president. And the answer is not either or, but both and. And here's why. We want mega farms to be able to assure the nation that we have national food security on one hand and the AIP to be able to assure every household that they have food security on the other hand. But you probably have heard me talk about AIP 2.0 and how that research and all concerned are even, you know, to go further to Mwanza uh, West. Research and others have stated that this seems to be wasted investment if it is not reformed. And I entirely agree with that. Because we need to make sure that we get what we are intending when we provide these services. Is AIP beneficial? Yes, it is. And precisely because we want food security at household level as well as the national level. And we want to make sure that we target those who can really produce. The duplication that has happened, the double dipping that has happened, sometimes has not helped the nation at all. And so we have already begun to consolidate all of the social uh, safety you know, programs to make sure that we target people right and we give them what is necessary or needed 
in order for them not to go hungry. But let those who can produce be able to do so. So, Karonga Nyungwe and Mwanza West uh, are both right in the sense that their concern is being considered. But the answer is we must reform and make sure that Malawians do not go hungry at any particular time. I want to assure Mwanza uh, West that uh, we will have all people that have their uh, card swiped get their fertilizer. And the backlog is already beginning to be cleared and they will make sure that happens. I think the Honorable Minister made that abundantly clear. Only 10,600 bags remain as of today, but they will make sure that uh, um, whatever is owed is done. You know, let me take a moment because uh, Zomba Malosa uh, stated something with regard to this year's AIP and the involvement of members of parliament. First of all, let me commend her because she's one of those that have done the best in making sure that her people receive this fertilizer. Uh, Ninety-seven percent, ninety-seven percent is not a joke. And I also, I also want to thank every MP that voluntarily participated, not because it was government policy at all, but because they saw that there is a big need. After all this thing was messed up, and I was the first to even indicate that when we launched it. MPs realized that our people need food sufficiency. The, they went out of their way, and I want to publicly say thank you. This is not the manner in which we want this program to be conducted. We realize that you did what you did because when a house is on fire, you don't begin to ask questions as to which water will be used to put out the fire. And so everybody had their hands on deck. But this will not happen again. The procurement will be done in time. Honorable members, order, please. Order. And if if honorable members Salima Southeast, order. If honorable members want to make sure that they are constituents who are the people who send them to this August house are served by their selflessness, yes. then let it be according to their decision and not according to government policy. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Honorable members, we now go to SONA, question five, Machinga Central East. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, first and foremost, let me thank you for according the people of Machinga the chance Magical Central is the chance to ask a question. I stand here honorably uh, to make the assurance double sure that indeed question number five is coming from the people of Machinga Central East. More specifically, 
uh, Paramount Chief Kawinga yes. Senior Tien Mulomba yes. Senior Tien Sanama yes. Tien Mizinga yes. and Tien Said Mataka yes. I submit Madam Thank you very much uh, Machinga Central East Your Excellency the President Madam Speaker, the Honorable Member for Machinga Central East, ask the President that considering that after the depreciation of the Malawi Kwacha, prices for commodities went up, but Chiefs on our area has remained stagnant. Your Excellency recognizing the important role that chiefs play in this country. How are you going to assist the chiefs in order to cushion the suffering they are experiencing? Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank the Honorable Member of Machinga Central East for his question. And I wish to inform the Honorable Member, Madam Speaker, that my government is aware that our chiefs are receiving an area which is not matching with the rising cost of living. And this has been the same for a number of years. I do sympathize with them, and we will do something about this in the coming financial year. In fact, In fact, um, I already directed the Minister of Finance to look into it, and uh, he would be addressing the issue in this House. <laughs> Madam Speaker, let me inform the Honorable Member and the House that my government tasked the Minister of uh, Local Government, Unity and Culture to also make sure that they work on a traditional leader's policy and provide guidelines for processing as well as the adjustment of honoraria for chiefs so that it is not left to the whim of a president without set processes and procedures. I'd like to inform Madam Speaker this August House, the Minister of Local Government, Unit and Culture has already moved many steps toward the same. And so when we consider these policies, as well as the fact that the Chiefs Act needs to be fully done or redone, we want to assure chiefs in this country, even those who are not on payroll, because of many factors that had come into how many of these had been appointed and or created, we want proper procedures in the way villages are created and so forth so that government should be able to have every one of these chiefs gazetted at all levels in order to accommodate them. And once this is done, we will also do the needful. But meanwhile, the Honorable Minister is already going to address this in the budget. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the President. Uh, the, the, well, Leader of Opposition, we have the honor of the question, and then I'll give you space. And then Thank you very uh, much, Madam yeah. Speaker. Uh, in vain of the depreciation of the quacha, does the President aware that, that civil servants are failing to sustain their families due to the same? What plans are there to make sure that the civil servants are not suffering? Thank you.
Thank you, Government uh, Whip. Yes, Madam Speaker, I rise again according to the same standing order that I stood uh, seeking your guidance whether the supplementary question has got anything to do with the substantive question and if so, if it is allowable considering that there was no notice of such given. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member, indeed, for um, Machinga Central East. Uh, that is a proper substantial question, which I think you should have given us notice, just like you did with this one. Uh, but we have not been given notice, but that, that's a substantial question. So, Honourable Government Chief Whip is uh, right that uh, we are asking completely new question uh, to the original question. I now recognize Honorable Leader of Opposition. Madam Speaker, since the question, question five, is touching much on uh, the ever rising cost of living, I wanted to engage the President on the following as to what his government is doing right now to check this ever rising cost of living both in short term medium term and long term madam speaker madam speaker we have uh, an example of uh, maize maize that is the step food in the country a bag of maize your excellency is now going at about 40,000 watch or so. And a common Malawian cannot reach to buy that. But also while you are tackling that question, Your Excellency, I wanted you to spur your strategy in curbing the current insecurity in the Honorable country. Member for Rumpi East, you are rising? A point of order. Very you you are rising security. on a point of order? Oh, um, honorable, oh, member, I can only give you the point of order after the, the questions. I'll give you. Oh, leader uh, of the House, can you? Yeah, madam, I'm rising on standing order, standing order 70, subsection 10, says any supplementary question shall not be used to introduce matters not included in the original answer to the question and also c says shall not purport to raise a new matter on the floor for the assembly is it in order for the leader of opposition to introduce new matters on this matter thank you honorable members uh, I would like to sustain the point of order as raised by the Honorable Leader of the House. Point of order sustained. Madam Speaker. Madam Honorable Speaker. Member for Rumpi East, I have not given you the floor. I have said I will give you immediately after the Leader of Opposition. Much as I respect your ruling, but I still thought that uh, the President can still address the house in as far as the insecurity is concerned. Malawians are living in fear. There is armed robbery everywhere in the country. And I think for the sustenance of peace and development in the country, the president could have said something on it. Thank you, Honorable Leader of Opposition. Can I have all the Honorable Members, please? Uh, Honourable Leader of Opposition, uh, much as I appreciate the questions that you're asking are very, very important and of national importance, but I think the Leader of Opposition, you also know, in terms of procedures, 
how what we're supposed uh, we're supposed to do and you are one of the members on the business committee as well as the leader of opposition so you do know what our procedures are much as i appreciate very much the importance of the questions that you are you are raising thank you a uh, point of order point what? of order yes honorable member for rumpi uh, east uh, thank you madam speaker there is uh, uh, I think Zomba Malos has been misquoted and is circulating. The president answered very well. And the, the question from Zomba Malos was straight and eloquently answered by the president. But the media is circulating that the president gave members of opposition, members of MPs, not only opposition, money to distribute the IAP. But now, this is, a mis this is misquoting what the president has answered and what the honorable member had asked the president. Let us not misuse the presence of the president in this house. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, honorable member for Rumpi East. Uh, honorable members of the media, can you please capture what is said in the house properly? Can you please make sure you capture what has been said in the House by the members as well as the responses from the President, please. That's my, my plea to the media um, fraternity. Thank you. Oh, no. no, no, no. I already gave you a space. I have to give others a chance today. Please. Honorable member for the Central, 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 Central East. East and then in Zimba, South Southeast. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Speaker, for organizing people of the, the Central East to ask a supplementary to His Excellency. Uh, first, His Excellency, I'm sending uh, the greetings from people, Senior Chief Chauma and Senior Chief Kapuga. While you are responding to the issues to do with rising costs and issues of honoraria for our chiefs, I would like to understand what is it that your government is going to do to also to look in issues of welfare of our chiefs, more especially in terms of housing. Some of our senior chiefs are staying in the dilapidated houses and the, they are not safe. I would want to understand from you, Your Excellency, in terms of housing for our chiefs, having in mind Senior Chief Chauma as well as Senior Chief Kapuga from the Jacinto East, but also some of the chiefs who are not on honorary list. We have group of village headmen, we have senior groups who are not receiving their honoraria. They are not on the payroll. What is it that uh, your government, your excellency, sir, is going to do to address these issues? I submit. Thank you, the uh, uh, Southeast and Mzimba. Southeast, sorry. Uh, is it Southwest or Southeast? Southeast, yes. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for recognizing the people of Zimba Southeast. Uh, Madam Speaker, actually you have already answered on that. I wanted just a clarification because we are talking about the media. The person who has posted that concerning what Zoma Marosa said is not the media such. It's a particular person who is using a pseudonym. So it's not the media. It's some a, a propagandist who has done that. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Noted. Uh, a clarification. Honorable Member for Rumpi East, I hear it is uh, Echigoba who has posted that. So, <laughs> Honorable, uh, your, your Excellency, the President. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. I want to thank members who are asking questions or making comments to make clarifications um, with regard to what I said or didn't say. But um, the honorable leader of the opposition, despite not following standing orders, as ruled by the speaker would need to know that what we have spelled out 
is exactly responding in the short term, in the mid term, and in the long term to the issues that are bedeviling us. I'm glad that our police service is making sure issues of insecurity are dealt with decisively. I want to make an appeal. And the appeal is that in this country, nobody should really find pleasure in lawlessness and even the encouragement of people who do evil to continue. That is not love in our country at all. And so when we all talk about how we need to be a safe place even for investors to come and invest their money, it's because this is a warm heart of Africa. Questions of the Central East have already been addressed and the Minister of Finance will make sure that these things do happen. Also, Ministry of uh, Local Government, Unity and Culture will follow up on the other issues that are to be covered. However, in terms of housing, I want to assure the honorable member that government continues as funds become available to construct these houses for chiefs. Some are already in progress. And those whose houses have not been done will be done. But it's a process that has not been stopped. We are grateful for the honorable member because of his standing with the chiefs he represents and the people of the Central East. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you uh, very much, Your Excellency. And uh, that marks the end of uh, that marks the end of President's question time. On Honorable members, before I uh, make announcements, uh, let me ask the leader of the house for guidance tomorrow, please. Madam, first of all, is to thank you in the manner you have chaired proceedings today. Thank His Excellency the President for taking time to respond to the questions from the honorable members and also for the honorable members in the house for being serious and improving indeed, Madam. Today, we have seen honorable members asking critical questions for the country. And if this spirit continues, Malawians will always appreciate Parliament. Tomorrow, Wednesday, House resumes at 2. But, Madam, because uh, we have not concluded on the State of the Nation address, debate will continue for some time. And therefore, the mover will be able to wind up the bed. Good evening. Very much, uh, Leader of the House. Honorable members, I just wanted to put it clear, the issue that was stated in the media, that the President provided, uh, gave money to members of Parliament to ferry fertilizer, that that is not true. And I think the public should know that that is not true. Honorable members were not given money by anybody to fed a fertilizer. People were doing this as personal initiatives. So there was no money that came from the government. Thank you. Uh, Madam, 
it's always nice, nice to recognize the people from Lanjibali when the president is here. But on the same issue, madam, I think to, it's, it's, it's more respecting to call this person a media house. Madam, the person who has authored this is not a media house. It's as you said it previously, I think you have respected it. It's a doba doba out there, madam. Our media houses have always consulted us if they want to publish something. So I think, I know it couldn't come from you. Let it come from me as a back page from this side. Please, doba dobas, slow down. Your time will come. If you want to contest in our constituencies, let us work first. Your time will come. Go and contest out there. We don't contest in this house. We are protected. Respect us. Respect the president. Don't put words into our mouth. We can easily sue you. We are also human beings. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Member for Mulanje Bale. Honorable Members, uh, NBS Bank will be meeting Honorable Members of Parliament tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. NBS Bank. And this is also to 11.30 a.m. here at Parliament Building. And you know I'm sure where we'll be meeting. <laughs> and this is also to make an announcement, an announcement that Honorable Malondela is now the new chairperson of the Youth Caucus, replacing Honorable Chomanika, who is now the deputy minister of local government and unity. Congratulations, honorable member. Honorable members, now before I adjourn the house, let me guide the house on how we will exit the chamber. After the procession of the speaker, all honorable members should remain standing in their seats, and His Excellency the President will be laid out of the chamber by the sergeant at arms, and thereafter, Honorable members may leave the chamber. I wish to urge you, honorable members, to keep order as His Excellency the President leaves the house. Let me now thank you, Your Excellency, once again for coming to the house to respond to questions arising from the address that you gave to the nation on 17th February 2023. On behalf of the honorable members, I wish to appreciate your respect to your constitutional mandate and also the honor to the House. As honorable members, we feel honored. Honorable members, I now adjourn the House to tomorrow, 1st March 2023 at 2 p.m. House adjourned. <laughs>